right, so so this is the last talk of the week. And uh, so last but not least, uh, we are welcoming uh, Frédéric Rebecca from Twitter. He created and he uh, tells about the factory signature of rationalization in the secreted Eisenstein model on the square. Thank you, Gregoire. I would like, first of all, to thank uh, the organizers, uh, Gregoire, uh, Philippe Godot, Le Cheminot, <laughs> Thierry Jolicoeur, for uh, this kind invitation. I will talk about uh, a, an attempt uh, to uh, assess uh, uh, excited states uh, in uh, uh, spin models. Uh, and this work has been done uh, mainly by uh, Francesco Ferrari, who is uh, a, a brilliant uh, uh, PhD student uh, in CISA. And uh, uh, we also discussed and collaborated with uh, Sandro Sorella and Al Alberto Parola. And uh, uh, the, the work that I will describe in the following uh, is uh, uh, essentially part of it has been published uh, in uh, Physical Review B recently. And this is the one dimensional part. And then we have a, s a submitted paper in the two dimensional uh, uh, case. So very quickly, these are the, uh, this is the outline of the talk. I will uh, first uh, give some motivation, which is probably not really needed in this audience. Uh, and then uh, I will talk about variational wave functions uh, for spin models. Uh, and uh, since not uh, all of you are uh, really experts of this, uh, I decided to spend uh, a little minute uh, also on the old approach uh, for the ground state. And then uh, uh, I will describe in some detail the new, let's say it's not really new because uh, this has been uh, proposed by Tao Li a few years back, uh, but never really tested uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, real uh, microscopic uh, uh, models. And then I will uh, show you the results. Uh, in, uh, uh, first, I will uh, uh, give you some uh, uh, benchmark on uh, 1D, where more or less everything is known, just to test that the method is uh, indeed working. And then uh, I will uh, go uh, to the two-dimensional uh, uh, Heisenberg model uh, with uh, some frustration given by J2. So usually I don't show any picture of my collaborators, uh, but here I have to make uh, some uh, exception uh, because I should uh, apologize for those uh, who already seen this talk. Uh, Previously, indeed, uh, it seems there is a sort of Bose condensate uh, uh, with a coherent uh, motion from uh, Germany, Poland, uh, France, uh, and then eventually in Davis. Uh, one element uh, has been evaporated. Uh, now I understand that also another uh, atom will evaporate uh, soon. So I apologize if uh, you have already seen a part of this. Hmm? What? what? <laughs> uh, George is no longer here. Yeah, so it's no longer <laughs> part of the Bose, and Bose condensation. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> <Say> it again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So uh, in, the l in the recent years, uh, has, uh, it has been uh, uh, many efforts have been uh, devoted to the study of ground state uh, properties uh, of uh, frustrated uh, uh, spin models. Uh, and this uh, includes uh, uh, brute force uh, approaches, uh, which are really uh, sort of uh, diagonalization uh, in a reduced uh, Hilbert space uh, uh, of the problem uh, done by uh, density matrix renormalization group or tensor networks. Uh, and uh, in this case, indeed, uh, I think uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, now rather uh, good uh, accuracy for uh, several, met for several uh, models. Uh, so here I plot just some example of uh, uh, DMRG and tensor network for the J1, J2 model on the square lattice. Uh, and uh, these are the energy per site. And you see that, uh, indeed, uh, we can reach very, very accurate uh, uh, results uh, for the ground state uh, energies uh, by increasing uh, the number of states that you keep. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, some brute force uh, approach. Uh, I would uh, instead prefer some uh, more educated guess uh, based on some traditional just Slater wave functions uh, in which you have a sort of transparent uh, 
uh, understanding of what uh, the wave function uh, will, uh, uh, will describe. And indeed, even within uh, this uh, approach, it's possible to compete uh, with this uh, kind of methods. And here I just show our recent results uh, on uh, the uh, J1, J2 model on the square lattice, uh, in which when you apply a few lengths of steps uh, of on uh, the uh, starting uh, variational wave function, you can extrapolate uh, to very good energies, which are uh, comparable uh, to those of the DMRG ones. This is the MRG, this is uh, IPEPS, okay. uh, this is the MRG on a torus, uh, I think, uh, on 10 by 10 by Donna Sheng group. Okay. I was asking about the, yes. This is, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is PEPS. This is PEPS, uh, and these are the extrapolations in the bond dimension and uh, environment uh, dimension. But this is not really the, just to say that uh, indeed, uh, in the last 20 years, uh, a lot of efforts have been uh, devoted to the ground state uh, uh, properties, but now probably it's good uh, to understand uh, if uh, we can do something also for excitations. And uh, indeed, uh, here I would like to convince you that uh, uh, it's uh, within this uh, just of Slater uh, approach, uh, it's possible uh, to describe, uh, to obtain excitations, uh, not from independent calculation, like uh, what you would do in uh, the MRG, but uh, to describe excitations acting with uh, a given operator to the uh, ground state wave function. And just to list uh, some, uh, evid uh, some, some example, uh, let's say the trivial uh, one is when uh, you have a mean field approach. Of course, uh, starting from the ground state, then you can obtain any excitation just applying creation or annihilation operators. Uh, this is, of course, uh, trivial. A little bit less uh, trivial example is given by the so-called final construction, which has been applied for the constructing the sound wave or rotons uh, uh, excitation in uh, uh, liquid iliums, uh, in which uh, you apply to the ground state uh, a the density uh, operator. And this is uh, also known as single mode approximation, because indeed with this uh, uh, wave function, you have just a single state for every uh, momentum k. Mm? Uh, then there is uh, uh, another even more uh, uh, clever and uh, beautiful way to obtain uh, excitations uh, by using uh, uh, the composite fermion approach uh, for the quantum hole effect, and we learned this uh, uh, this week uh, from uh, Professor Jay. So here I don't want really to uh, describe the whole spectrum, which is uh, really uh, a tough uh, uh, problem, I will concentrate uh, on uh, dyna dynamical uh, uh, properties, and in particular I will uh, focus on the dynamical spin structure factor, which is uh, defined as follow. Okay? And here, this is uh, the ground state, I just apply the spin operator and then uh, consider uh, the overlap with uh, excited uh, states, and this uh, will uh, give uh, information about uh, the nature of, uh, the, uh, of the phase. So, for instance, uh, just again uh, to, to mention something which is uh, very well known, in the 1D Heisenberg model, this can be computed essentially exactly, mm, up to some uh, very uh, high accuracy, uh, by using beta ansatz uh, uh, calculations, and this has been uh, compared to uh, experimental results uh, for this material uh, uh, done uh, by neutron scattering. And you see that in this case, this material is is believed to be very well uh, described by the 1D Heisenberg model, and indeed uh, you see that uh, the agreement uh, is uh, uh, almost perfect. Then uh, the uh, dynamical spin structure factor has been also computed uh, experimentally in uh, several materials. I don't list uh, all uh, the experiments, uh, just to mention the cases of uh, uh, coupe-rates uh, uh, and uh, uh, this uh, material uh, which uh, uh, is believed uh, to describe uh, a uh, quasi one dimensional uh, system. So, just to say that this quantity is uh, really crucial to understand the nature of the low energy excitations. So, there have been uh, many attempt, uh, attempts uh, to evaluate the dynamical structure factor from uh, the theoretical point of view. Uh, I don't have to mention, of course, uh, the uh, calculation by uh, Sasha and collaborators uh, uh, computing uh, uh, the magnum dispersion and the uh, multimagnum decay in ordered uh, antiferromagnets uh, uh, like triangular 
uh, lattice, and these are uh, a computation for uh, really ordered antiferromagnets. Then recently, people uh, uh, considered uh, uh, more uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, Hamiltonians like the Kitayev or the Kitayev Heisenberg, in which you have uh, also a spin liquid. Uh, uh, face uh, and uh, uh, the, in the group of uh, uh, Polman and Mössner, they computed uh, the dynamical structure factors by using uh, uh, DMRG uh, methods. Uh, let me mention just this paper, recent paper by uh, Professor Sendrick. I don't know if uh, he mentioned that. Uh, 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 last week, uh, uh, the computing uh, uh, within a Monte Carlo, quantum Monte Carlo method, uh, uh, the, the, dynamical spin, uh, the dynamical spin structure factor for a model in which you don't have sign problem, they uh, provided some evidence uh, for some uh, uh, fractionalization of the excitations uh, across uh, a uh, transition uh, which is uh, from uh, an antiferromagnet to a valence bond uh, crystal. Okay, so here you see that going uh, from uh, the uh, antiferromagnet, uh, where you have a well-defined magnet here, uh, you go through a quantum critical point uh, in which, uh, on the other side, you have a valence bond crystal, which is fully gapped. Uh, but at the transition, you have uh, uh, some uh, emergent uh, uh, gapless uh, uh, excitations around uh, uh, pi pi, and this is uh, the sign of. Uh, uh, fractionalizations. Uh, indeed, uh, you have fractionalizations because the magnum here will, uh, will lose uh, its weight uh, and uh, a sort of broad continuum uh, will appear uh, over the whole. Uh, uh, this is a, a sort of XY, an isotropic model. So this is uh, the transverse and this is the longitudinal uh, response. Okay. So just the last slide about uh, experiments uh, in which uh, uh, there have been uh, a uh, nice calculation, nice experiment uh, in, uh, in Lausanne by the group of Rono and collaborators in which uh, by using uh, uh, neutron scattering on this uh, uh, material, which is essentially an unfrustrated Heisenberg model on a square lattice, they noticed that uh, the magnum peak uh, is very well defined uh, around pi pi, while uh, around uh, pi zero, essentially, there is no uh, signal, and you have a broad uh, continuum. Uh, and so they suggested, uh, by using also a variational approach, which is, very which is essentially the same as uh, we are using, uh, uh, that uh, you can have some coexistence uh, between uh, uh, magnons and spinons, uh, magnons at low energy and spinons at uh, high energy. If this is true or not, uh, I don't know. And I will not, of course, uh, uh, even try to answer this uh, uh, question. Uh, interestingly, uh, again, uh, Sandwick, uh, with also the collaboration of Sylvain here, they published uh, also a paper recently on PRX uh, in which uh, they computed, uh, among other uh, calculation, the spectrum of the Heisenberg model. Uh, pure Heisenberg model using quantum Monte Carlo. Again, you don't have sign problem. So essentially, you can do it, uh, apart having uh, some problem in the uh, analytic continuation. And uh, uh, as far as uh, I uh, understand from uh, uh, Anders, uh, uh, there is some uh, evidence uh, for having uh, a broad continuum around pi uh, zero, uh, possibly uh, compatible with uh, the existence of uh, spinons. Nearly, nearly. Yeah, but I got an email uh, uh, by, by Sandwick, uh, and uh, uh, in, the, in the paper that we have just submitted, we just, uh, at the conclusion, uh, we wrote uh, some stupid sentence saying that ah, this is uh, possibly uh, giving the uh, possibility of having uh, uh, the confined spinons in the anti uh, citing Rono, and then he wrote me saying, no, no, you have to cite also our work, because we. <laughs> I think that this is, uh, this is ne when you say nearly, this means that uh, you, you don't have, uh, you, are, you are not so brave uh, to. Yeah. Uh, I think the message was that at the time there's no No, probably not.
exactly. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. But let's say you have uh, indeed uh, you see a difference because here uh, around pi pi you see a, a very strong pull, while uh, in pi zero the the magnum branch is much more uh, reduced uh, with respect uh, uh, to that. Okay. Uh, so let me uh, let me spend a few minutes on our approach. So we start from a spin model, which is defined in general by this uh, kind of Hamiltonian, and we have uh, spin one half electrons. So, in order to do to construct uh, some uh, variational wave function, uh, we use uh, this uh, representation, which is uh, exact for the spin. We rewrite the spins in terms of uh, this uh, uh, electron operators. This is uh, also called now parton. Uh, approach uh, in which you split the spin into two electrons. And in doing this, let me say that you also uh, uh, include a uh, gauge redundancy since uh, indeed you can change the, elect the electron operator without changing uh, the, the spin. Okay? By doing this, this is exact, uh, you rewrite a complicated Hamiltonian into another complicated Hamiltonian, which is uh, essentially a four body. Uh, term interaction. And on top of that, uh, if you want to describe uh, a spin model, you have also to impose uh, that you have one electron per site because you have one spin per site. So on top of that, uh, you have also the constraint that uh, the occupation of the electrons is uh, equal to one. Of course, up to here, everything is uh, exact, but uh, you don't solve a lot. So one uh, uh, possible approximation that you can do is to do a mean field approximation of this uh, Hamiltonian. And uh, the most general Hamiltonian uh, which uh, preserves uh, um, spin SU2 symmetry is a BCS uh, Hamiltonian, in which you have uh, hopping uh, and pairing, uh, singlet pairing. And so this uh, T and delta will define the mean field ansatz, uh, and so also the BCS uh, uh, spectrum. Of course, once you do the, the mean field approximation, the constraint is no longer exactly satisfied, and but only on, uh, can be satisfied on average if you put some chemical potential, for instance. And so this is a very uh, crude approximation. Uh. However, the, the constraint can be reinserted uh, into the problem by considering the Gutzwiller uh, projector. So from this uh, mean field Hamiltonian H0, you construct uh, the ground state. And this is possible because electrons are uh, essentially free. And then uh, you Gutzwiller project them. Of course, uh, when you consider the Gutzwiller projection, then uh, you cannot do anything analytically because this is a strong coupling uh, uh, perturbation. But uh, fortunately, you can uh, do Monte Carlo, variational Monte Carlo. So you can sample, essentially, this wave function with the Gutzwiller exactly. Mm? So this is not, of course, the exact uh, wave function. This is an approximation. But this uh, wave function lives in the correct uh, spin uh, Hilbert space. Okay? So you, have only, you can sample all possible configurations with one electron per site. OK, now this approach to me is very transparent because you have the Hamiltonian, and then you can construct the ground state. But can, you can also construct excitations. And one kind of excitation is just uh, to uh, change the electronic uh, occupation before the Gutzwiller projection. And then uh, Gutzwiller project uh, uh, states in which you have one or more uh, uh, electron excited. <laughs> and uh, these I will uh, call uh, spinons. So the spinons are objects uh, in which uh, you just uh, change the occupation of the, uh, of the uh, um, uh, free band. Uh, this approach is essentially exact in the uh, 1D haldane shastri model. Indeed, I think that not only the ground state can be written as a Gutzwiller projected Fermi C, but also many, not all, uh, but many of the excitations can be uh, indeed represented as uh, particle only excitations, uh, uh, and then uh, Gutzwiller projected. So why is this called spin-on? Why is it called spin-on? What's the connection to the? Good question. <laughs> is it a localized spin? So let's say, if you, if, you, if you take, for instance, the XY model, uh, 
In the XY model, uh, you have uh, spinless fermions, uh, and the exact solution is just you fill the Fermi C. Uh, and then uh, if you have, uh, so uh, if you do an excitation, you just, uh, an elementary excitation uh, carrying spin one half uh, is the, the filled Fermi C plus uh, is one electron. Of course, uh, these are, uh, let's say, on, a, on any uh, finite system, uh, this, uh, if you have an even number of sites, uh, you always have uh, an integer spin, so this cannot exist. Uh, so this uh, excitation here essentially is a particle excitation in which uh, you take uh, one electron here, which is half of the spin, uh, and you move it uh, there. So it's a particle. Is a spin one or spin zero, depending on the spin, but it's a it's a pair. It's a pair of spinners that can be. It's a particle of excitations in which, uh, let's say, you take one electron, which is half of its spin, and you move it here. It's not a. It's not a. Sp it's a two spin on excitation. It's a two spin on excitation. But this uh, is, uh, let's say, not spin. Okay. Shh, sorry. Yes, you're right. Let's say this is uh, a two spin on excitation, but this defines spin on excitations. Because another excitation that you can do is uh, to change the mean field uh, parameters. So this is clear in the 2D Kitaev model, in which what you can do is to change the fluxes uh, piercing the hexagons from, let's say, 0 to pi. And here you have another excitation, which is a magnetic flux, also called Bison's. Okay, and in the Kitaev model, visons and spinos are totally decoupled, and uh, in this model, the mean field is exact. Uh, the problem is that in general, for a generic spin model, the mean field is not exact, and so in principle, here you have an interaction between spinons uh, and uh, visons. Okay, and here I will uh, focus on this kind of uh, excitations. So this is for the ground state now. Let me move uh, to excitations. So how can we construct excitations? So a simple way is uh, that uh, we start uh, from the ground state and uh, we do a particle excitations. Uh, this is in, uh, with uh, S is equal to 0. Okay? And then uh, we can, uh, for each momentum Q, we can define uh, L uh, independent, L uh, uh, states uh, mm, depending uh, on uh, a parameter. Mm. Here, this is probably a complicated way written in real space in which you just do C dagger K plus Q C K. <coughs> okay? But here we prefer to write it uh, in, in real space. So, for every momentum Q, there is uh, a, um, you have at most L excitations uh, that can be labeled uh, by this parameter R, which is the distance uh, between uh, the creation and the annihilation uh, term. So essentially what you do is that uh, here you have uh, your BCS state. Here you do this, uh, this object here. So essentially you are creating, uh, you are destroying a particle here, and you are creating a particle there, and then you could see the project. So this means that before projection, instead of sampling something like that, you sample something like that. Because then, uh, after good the projection, you have to go back to the physical Hilbert space. So the a, a, con a generic configuration, uh, uh, sorry, here will contain a holon and a doublon, such that uh, when you apply this, uh, you go back into the physical Hilbert space. So here you have this, uh, and then what you can do is just to dialyze the Hamiltonian, the physical Hamiltonian, the spin Hamiltonian, within this uh, non-orthogonal basis. Okay? So it, you solve this uh, linear uh, system in which uh, this is uh, these are the elements of the Hamiltonian within uh, this uh, subspace. And this is uh, the matrix uh, uh, which comes out from the fact that these are non-orthogonal. Okay? And uh, all these, so this and that uh, can be computed again uh, by using a stochastic approach, by sampling the wave function. Mm? But uh, you can sample that. And then uh, eventually, when you, your sample is large enough, you can solve this linear problem and find 
eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay? And this is. Say. Is it obvious that momentum can turn? Yeah, because this uh, state has uh, uh, if, uh, a given momentum. Right. Yeah, but for second, yeah, but one, yeah. yeah. Sorry, this. Yes. So there you you have operators or matrices uh, that depend on both. No, no, but this is I can show you. It, it, it's uh, it's conserved. Absolutely. So this is exactly what Tao Li and Yang uh, proposed uh, eight years uh, ago with uh, just a slight uh, it's a modification because here we consider the case with S is equal to zero, which is much simpler from the uh, Monte Carlo uh, approach. Is it really artificial? Uh, I guess you can, using this basis, you can recover the particle excitation you described before. Yes. Well, the yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So if you have a trans, here I would like to write th something like that because this is not uh, in general translation. So you know that this can be also, you can break translation invariance here and then you can recover it after a good severe projector. Okay, but if this is a uh, translation invariant, then uh, this is nothing but uh, C dagger K plus Q C K. Okay, and this is exactly what you have there. But let's say this is more general because this is, uh, where is it? Here, I just, uh, uh, you can have more complicated uh, bands uh, due to the pre presence of the pairing. Uh, it's obvious uh, your, your, that your projection doesn't, you said it's non orthogonal basis. So, again, let me say, this is, uh, it's not obvious uh, that when you do the Gutzler projector, then you can, you, you remain in the two spinon. So before it's a two spinon, then uh, nobody knows uh, what yeah. this object uh, will. So maybe you will also consider four spinon, uh, uh, six spinons. And indeed, we checked uh, on the on the 1D Heisenberg chain, where you know that uh, the sum rule for the two spinon uh, in the beta ansatz uh, is uh, 60 something, 68%. Instead, uh, in our approach, is essentially 99. So this means that uh, here you will also generate something else. Yeah. So eventually, your uh, eigenstate uh, will be written uh, in, the, in this way. And this approach uh, uh, also contain uh, finished? OK. Great. So this approach also contain the single mode approximation, because if you have, uh, for instance, if your diagonalization finds that uh, this A is a delta function, in, uh, so this means uh, that here you are creating and destroying uh, the spin on in the same place, uh, then uh, Essentially, this operator will commute uh, with the Gutzwiller projector, and you have uh, nothing but uh, that your state is uh, SZQ applied to the ground state. Only in this case, you have that uh, the two spin on operator will commute uh, with the uh, Gutzwiller uh, operator. Okay? But in general, this uh, is a more complicated uh, object. And eventually, the dynamical structure factor can be approximated by taking uh, only these states. So instead of having a sum over the whole Hilbert space, you have a sum over at most uh, L states. Mm? And uh, you have the energies, uh, and you have uh, the overlaps. Uh, and so the, the dynamical structure factor is approximated by this. Uh, and you see that you don't need any analytic continuation, because you have everything already. Uh, you have all the, the ingredients already here. OK, so let me. Uh, first consider the spin one half uh, J1, J2 model in 1D, in which you have uh, J1 nearest neighbor and J2 next nearest neighbor. The system is frustrated unless J2 is equal to zero. So the phase diagram is very well known. Frederick mentioned that. Uh, so you have a gapless state uh, from uh, uh, J2 equal to zero to uh, a value which is very well known. And then you have a gapped state. Uh, and in particular, you have a gap state uh, which uh, which has uh, uh, incommensurate uh, 
features, so the spectrum, the, the, the minimum of the spectrum is not at uh, pi when J2 is uh, probably slightly larger than 0.5. Okay? So the uh, phase diagram is, has been studied uh, by several uh, uh, methods. And this is a benchmark on uh, 30 uh, sites. So in this uh, case, you can do exact diagonalization. And this is uh, the result for different, uh, for J2 equal to 0, in which uh, the wave function has uh, just hopping and uh, uh, pairing on site at, uh, and the next nearest neighbor hopping, uh, pairing, but this is not uh, really important. And this is the signal with uh, some smearing. Huh? You put a smearing, otherwise you have only delta functions. And uh, the red is the Lanxus, and the blue is the VMC. You see that they agree very well. And this is the result uh, in the uh, Q omega space. Again, this is the VMC and this is the, the Lanxus. So they are uh, quite, uh, uh, quite similar. Uh, here we have chosen a linear scale. If you use a logarithmic scale, then it's a little bit uh, uh, better, but the agreement is essentially uh, perfect. And here, this is uh, one of the my, my favorite plots. Here, again, I plot the same data for J2 equal to 0 and also 0.45 as a function of q. So here the size of the circle indicate the overlap between the variational and the exact state. Okay? And this is 1, and you see that this uh, tiny symbol here is uh, 0.95. So except this point, uh, all the points are, have overlaps larger than 0.98, essentially. And uh, the, the, the color here, uh, denotes uh, the, the, the signal. Okay, so here the, you have a peak uh, in pi, while here you have uh, essentially no signal, no? Because this is, uh, you see that uh, around zero the, the signal is very low. No? And you have a quite good uh, accuracy, and also in the gapped phase, so this is gapless, this is gapped, so here you have the exact solution even in the thermodynamic limit with the Beteanzas. Here you don't have it. And you see that also in this case, in which the spectrum is uh, quite different, you still have uh, very nice uh, uh, overlaps. Here it's a little bit uh, less, so you see that here this is 0.5. But still, uh, many of the low energy states uh, are, uh, have uh, a very good uh, overlap. So to me, this is a sort of proof. I know that you don't agree, um, Frederick. But <laughs> for me, this is an evidence uh, that uh, you can describe uh, spin-ons uh, in uh, at least in one day. So here, this has nothing to do with s of q and omega. You are merely computing overlaps. Yeah, this is a, Yeah, this is s. Uh, so the, the, the color is uh, s of q and omega. Okay. So here I'm, I'm just uh, plotting. So this is uh, the si This is the, the, the every state. But then the color gives you how how uh, how strong uh, is uh, the. No, 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 no. It's just the the size is just the uh, the how large is the overlap between the exact and the variational. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you need to. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It would be nice one to, to see if it is possible to check in other, with other uh, quantities uh, that indeed uh, we have uh, uh, the correct. Uh, yes, when you create only a pair of spin-offs, it would be nice that you compare the Bethel function that you will have maybe to some limit like the Eisen limit. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So th you don't have a magnetic order, so all, uh, all are equal. It's a singlet. It's a perfect singlet, the wave function. So, for example, if an autonomous is another perfect, yes. then it will be a different 
Sure, sure. But indeed, in, in the 2D, you will see that I will put a magnetic uh, moment in the, in the wave function, and so I will compute the transverse. Yeah, but let's say uh, everything. I didn't uh, because the, the sampling becomes um, more complicated. But uh, I don't see any reason why. Since the wave function is uh, is a singlet, uh, I would be very surprised to see a difference. No, I have many. I have uh, at most L, because uh, this is the parameter R, which uh, labeled the, if you want, it's uh, like having. Uh, Where? This is just one, but this is, no, no, but let's say. The, what is it? Sorry. Here. For every momentum Q, I have uh, L, where L is the, na is the, you see, here you destroy in one point and you create in another. So you can create in other L uh, sites. Of course, uh, many of them uh, will, have, uh, uh, will have zero norm, uh, or maybe they are uh, dependent. Uh, so the, indeed, uh, I said that you have at most, uh, and indeed, uh, for if, you, if you do this, uh, you see that, uh, which is correct, be, I think, because for the smallest momentum, you can only create uh, essentially one excitation with uh, uh, two spin on. So it depends on the Q, how many you have. Your color changes on the previous slide. Uh, are they, I don't see the correspondence for the, uh, for the J2 or the class or the class. You don't, you don't have this. This. <laughs> so this is, again, VMC. Lanxus uh, for different uh, uh, J2, sorry, here are almost invisible. 0 0.2, 0 0.45, so 0 0.2 is gapless, 0.45 is gapped, but indeed the gap is very small because it's costly, it's tauless. Uh, here the transition, so the gap opens very slowly. And this is uh, 0.7 inside the incommensurate phase, and you see that indeed uh, here the, the minimum is no longer like that. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, in Badonev, I uh, just uh, challenge you to find the 10 differences uh, between uh, the VMC and the Lanxos. OK? So you see that it doesn't work. VMC is on the left uh, and Lanxos on the right. <laughs> and you see that uh, even in this case, which is non-trivial, uh, you, you find uh, the essentially the, the Okay, here you have a difference because here you have a little bit more of weight, but uh, this is one of the differences. Yeah, yeah, so I compare the, 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 the I, I uh, otherwise I have only deltas. No, no. But of course, uh, okay, these are 30 sites, but of course uh, we can do much more, and this is for. Uh, 198 sites, uh, only lang only no, uh, only VMC uh, for different values of J2, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 7, 1. And you see how accurate, so how uh, beautiful uh, are the results. So I think that at least in 1D, we are able uh, to describe uh, within a single framework uh, different phases, uh, the gapless, uh, the gap and also the incommensurate uh, one. Uh, nothing, because unfortunately, if you have it, uh, uh, you're more than welcome to give me. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. No, it is. It's not, it's not <laughs> accurate. It's beautiful. <laughs> I, I use the, the, the correct word. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, here I can compare with the, the, with the better answers. So, yeah, it's only beautiful. Eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, say if you if you want to con. Yeah, yeah. So and you can do, but you also can do open, for example, because we know in the present 
I can do open, let's say, the, the, the periodic boundary conditions are better for us because uh, you don't have to break uh, the, the translational symmetry in the Hamiltonian. Otherwise, uh, you, can, uh, you, you will have different parameters. Uh, and so you here, essentially, you have, uh, you see, in this way function, uh, let me just uh, insist on that, uh, you have uh, only three parameters. So one gives the energy scale. So you have a two-parameter wave function, two-parameter. And you don't change them, uh, you just uh, you use the same wave function, and uh, again, you can, you can say that uh, these are variational uh, parameters, but these are fixed once you diagnose the matrix. Uh, so you optimize them by energy? Or, I mean, how you no, no, you optimize only the ground state energy. Yeah. And then uh, this is uh, computed uh, optimizing the ground state energy. So again, you have two, par two parameters in the ground state, uh, and these are fixed uh, once the wave function is fixed. So of course, they are optimized in the sense that they uh, are the, the, the solution of this linear equation, but uh, you don't really optimize like in the... Okay, anyway. So just uh, uh, two words uh, saying that uh, indeed the Gutzner projector is important uh, because uh, uh, this is uh, the, 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 the dynamical structure factor after and uh, before. So this is the uh, mean field calculation, you see that uh, for J2 equal to zero, the shape is the, the same, but the weight is completely different, okay? While uh, for other values of J2, uh, instead you see that uh, you have a strong effect. So you cannot under really under always understand uh, the, the picture taking the mean field. So now in the last uh, 15 minutes, let me uh, go to the two-dimensional case. So in two dimension, you can have a magnetic order. Huh? So in order to, in, uh, to include magnetic order in the wave function, what you can do, so before, so if, uh, if you want to consider a non-magnetic state, so a spin liquid or a valence bond state, you can work uh, with the same kind of Hamiltonian. And if you want to have a valence bond, maybe you, you can break uh, the translational symmetry in the hopping and pairing. But this is the same. So this is always SU2 symmetric wave function. If you want to describe uh, an antiferromagnet, uh, say the, the simplest in this uh, approach is just uh, to, to add uh, an antiferromagnetic uh, uh, staggered field in the mean field Hamiltonian. And here we put uh, magnetic order in the along x direction. Uh, then uh, indeed uh, the magnetic moment uh, is uh, in the xy plane uh, once uh, you uh, consider the projection on the SZ equal to zero, uh, but still it's in the XY plane. And then uh, what we can do is to compute the transverse, uh, so uh, dynamical structure factor along uh, Z. And in order to uh, improve uh, the wave function, here you have essentially one parameter. Mm? I don't consider pairing in this case because otherwise the wave function will become a Pfaffian. So still, uh, these two wave functions are determinants. If you want to include both pairing and uh, magnetic order, the wave function will become a Pfaffian wave function, which is more complicated, still possible, but a uh, little bit more complicated. And uh, in order to reproduce uh, the correct uh, uh, spin wave uh, fluctuations, uh, what you can do is to add the Jastro factor, uh, which is a spin-spin Jastro factor that depends upon this uh, uh, pseudo potential uh, VRR prime. And you can optimize this, uh, this parameter for, for every distance. Is okay? Ah, sorry, sorry, there is a typo here. Sorry, there is a typo here, but not here. This is, no, this is uh, the SX. Sorry, thank you. I will correct this before sending uh, the. Uh, This is just because uh, you have a better, uh, better energy. Yeah. You can do it also without that. But uh, indeed, let me, let me say, so here, if uh, it's a simple exercise, uh, that if you take this and you project along uh, S is equal to 0, then uh, the, the resulting, even without the Gutzwiller projector, the, the resulting uh, uh, magnetization is uh, no longer along x, but it's in the plane. You have a U, you restore if you want a U1 uh, symmetry along uh, along Z, okay? So in, uh, if you don't do this, uh, then you will have uh, you will break uh, you will have uh, three different uh, uh, axes. Instead, here you have only 
let's say, uh, the transverse and then uh, the one in the plane. So you have a, essentially you restore U1 symmetry. Z, Z. But the order is in. Yeah, yeah but if you uh, the, the point is that uh, if uh, you put the the field, uh, the magnetic field along X, uh, and you do the projection uh, uh, with S Z equal to zero, then you restore the symmetry along Z. This is the the statement. So which means the order is can. It can be any 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 any, 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 any yeah any in the in the X Y plane. Yeah, yeah. Fine. More or less. It's I, uh, I, I can show you. So, first exercise: uh, consider weakly coupled chains. Uh, so you have uh, a unfrust an unfrustrated model in which you have J parallel and J perp, uh, and then uh, you go from J perp equal to zero in which you have uncoupled chains uh, to J perp equal to one in which you have uh, the uh, the uh, standard Heisenberg model. So this model has an uh, antiferromagnetic order as soon as J perp is larger than zero, essentially, because you don't have frustration, susceptibility is infinite for the chain. And uh, uh, spinons uh, are confined as soon as uh, uh, J perp is uh, finite, because indeed, uh, if you try to, uh, to move uh, a domain wall uh, here, essentially, uh, you will pay an energy which is uh, uh, proportional to uh, in the number of uh, spin flip times uh, J perp. Of course, uh, if J perp is small, uh, then uh, you will have a very weak confinement. Uh, and uh, if uh, the size of your cluster is uh, smaller than uh, the, uh, the correlation length, so let's say the, the confinement uh, uh, length, then uh, you will see essentially uh, the confined spinons. So it's uh, non-trivial. And indeed, uh, if uh, here I plot uh, the case with uh, j perp equal 0.1, you see that essentially you have uh, very similar to the 1D, except that the magnum around pi pi is acquiring uh, more weight. Of course, here you have a doubling because, uh, let's say, here it's coupled at pi pi and 0 pi because you have, uh, let's say, it's independent essentially on, on uh, uh, Q. So you have uh, er the repetition. Okay, so here I for j perp equal to zero, it's gapless at pi pi and zero pi. When you put a small j perp, this remains uh, gapless while this uh, starts to be gapped. Okay, and then uh, you increase, and indeed you see that this uh, becomes uh, gapped while this is uh, stays gapless, and then uh, the magnum is more and more uh, well defined. And eventually, okay, this is at uh, point 0.7, you reach a situation in which you have a well defined magnum everywhere. Let This, this is the transverse. Uh, this is the transverse. No. No. Let's say I could, but I didn't. Yeah. L let me uh, say something which is uh, maybe important uh, that indeed uh, you see that here the, the, the continuum is very well re uh, reproduced, while here in the, in the antiferromagnetic case, uh, this is not uh, J perp equal to 1, but anyway, this is well. Uh, uh, ordered, we totally miss uh, the continuum that, at, uh, which is close to the magnum. And indeed, uh, this is um, uh, s due to some multi-magnum decay, and probably we are not able within this uh, simplified uh, approach in which you just do two spin on excitation to reproduce uh, a multi-magnum uh, continuum. I say, uh, this is uh, what is. Uh, hmm? Uh, 22 by 22. So of course you see that uh, 22 by 22. If uh, here essentially you see the confined spinons or nearly the confined spinons, uh, because maybe they will have uh, a, a. So looking on a GSD, sorry, Yeah, 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 sure. Sure, sure, sure. But the problem is a technical problem because if you want to do here, we use the same sampling uh, in the for the ground state and for the excitations. Uh, while if you want to do the longitudinal, you have to do uh, uh, s uh, uh, sorry c dagger up, uh, c down, and then uh, you have to do a different sampling uh, 
for uh, the ground state and for the excitations, uh, and then you have to do it for every Q independently. Here you do just one kind of computation and you have all the Q. It's technical, so it's more complicated, but it's uh, possible. Indeed, the Dalla Piazza did that. This is non-frustrated. This is non-frustrated. Can be checked again. Yeah. 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 I will be very happy. Yeah, yeah, because it is. Not a benchmark like in 1D, because you don't have, but let's say, still, uh, you can, uh, if, you, if you believe. Uh, hmm? if, if you agree, two different perspectives. Yeah. yeah, yeah, if you believe in the analytic continuation, then uh, you can. Uh, but now let me just in the last, last uh, five minutes or less uh, discuss about the frustrated uh, model in which you don't uh, have uh, uh, sign-free Monte Carlo calculation. So this is the J1, J2, in which, uh, again, you put a frustrating uh, J2. There are uh, tons of papers. I cannot cite all of them. I'm not able to do this uh, uh, moving uh, uh, stuff like uh, you did. So I just uh, mentioned the last, uh, uh, the last works. And the phase diagram is uh, now converging, I think, at least uh, in uh, one aspect, uh, that uh, the transition uh, from the nail uh, to some to the non uh, uh, magnetic one is about uh, 46 48 so now before it was more uh, 38 uh, spin wave like now instead the many different approaches are pointing to or something like that and also this uh, is uh, rather well uh, understood since the beginning what is not yet clear is the nature of the spin liquid or uh, let's say the non magnetic if it is really a spin liquid or uh, some valence bond uh, state. So what you can do is uh, first uh, do a computation for the ground state and compute the magnetization through the spin-spin correlation. And this is uh, uh, the, the thermodynamic extrapolation by using clusters uh, from 10, 10 times 10 to 22 by 22. This is the curve of the magnetization as a function of J2. This is the exact uh, by uh, Sandwick uh, in the unfrustrated case. Uh, so the error is uh, about uh, uh, 7%. But you see that uh, this is the curve. And the wave function that we have uh, is uh, just uh, nearest neighbor hopping with uh, some flux phase uh, in it. So you have a pi flux uh, through the plaquette, no pairing, and staggered magnetization along uh, uh, in the xy plane. And this is, uh, for the unfrustrated case, uh, this is our result uh, compared to what Dalla Piazza uh, did in the nature physics uh, in the group of Rono. And uh, you have to compare this with that. So this is uh, what they computed uh, with uh, a similar but less accurate uh, uh, magnetic wave function uh, without the gastro, but this is not really important. You see that essentially we, uh, we totally agree. Uh, and in this case, uh, you have a well-defined magnum everywhere. Uh, what they did uh, well, to explain uh, the continuum around uh, pi zero was to take another wave function, a spin liquid one, without magnetic order, and uh, compute the same object. And now with this wave function, you see that you have a broad continuum here. But uh, unfortunately, you also have negative energies, because of course, uh, if you do this job and you, optim and you get the, the, the energies, uh, nobody prevents you to have some uh, energy which is below the ground state. Uh, uh, and this is uh, a signal that the wave function is not good. Instead, uh, in this case, uh, we never get uh, energies that are below the ground state. But in principle, you can, because you just uh, take a larger basis, and you diagonalize, and maybe you find something. And so what they said is that, OK, we can take a part of the result from here. So this is the magnum, part of the result from there. This is the continuum. And uh, they published uh, uh, this uh, nature physics. We'll do something correct, uh, and uh, we will publish PRB. So you don't have a continuum uh, just above the magnum at pi zero? No. Again, again uh, this is uh, similar to what I described before. We missed uh, the, the, con the, the multi-magnum uh, uh, state. 
Now you increase J3, and you see that uh, by increasing, uh, uh, sorry, J2, you increase J2, and uh, you see that uh, you have uh, something which goes in this direction because uh, the, 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 the magnum is still well defined around pi pi, but uh, is going to lose uh, the intensity around pi zero. And moreover, the, there is a very well defined softening uh, of the energy around pi zero. Okay? And you also recover more. Uh, Continuum. So this is still in the magnetically ordered phase. So you see that now we have a much better, much, much stronger continuum, probably because uh, the spinons are uh, more deconfined. So they are, uh, can be described with that. Mm? This is our interpretation. But you see that uh, indeed, uh, when you approach the transition, you have two effects. Uh, the continuum uh, is, uh, let's say, is. Uh, much uh, it's broad here and the peak uh, is uh, of the magnum uh, is uh, going to lose the intensity and in the same time it's going to zero and then when you reach uh, the uh, the spin liquid uh, you have a gapless point uh, around pi zero okay and then within uh, the spin liquid region you remain with uh, gapless excitations uh, at pi zero pi pi and zero zero and these are essentially can be explained by the fact that the wave function here is a Z2 gapless spin liquid in which you have uh, hopping and pairing. And this structure gives you four Dirac points at uh, plus or minus pi half, pi half. OK? So these gapless excitations are just uh, when uh, you create a spin, you, you move a spin on from here to there or from here to there. So it's natural to expect uh, gapless excitations not only at pi pi, but also at pi zero. OK, so this is uh, in the la very last uh, one minute. Uh, le let me just uh, list uh, the, uh, the advantages. Uh, I know that in French, maybe this is not a good uh, word to write. Uh, and uh, the disadvantages uh, of the method. So uh, the advantages are that the Monte Carlo sampling, we do a Monte Carlo sampling with no sign problem, because everything is uh, computed variationally. We don't have problems. Uh, uh, related to the analytic continuation, mm, which is uh, maybe, go maybe good, mm, maybe not. And we have a transparent, sort of transparent in interpretation uh, in terms of uh, these spin-on, two spin-on excitations. And uh, this is particularly good uh, to study the, uh, the, the localization of magnons into spin -on. So something in which uh, you, you just broad uh, the magnon into two spin -on. Okay. And uh, the disadvantages are that, again, no analytic continuation is required. So eventually, we have only delta functions. And uh, if you want to reconstruct uh, a, a continuum, then this is uh, quite hard, <laughs> because uh, really, it's, uh, you, you have to take very large systems, and you have to study uh, how these delta functions will evolve with uh, the sides, which is uh, really difficult. And indeed, it's very difficult to distinguish between a real magnum and a continuum. So of course, I cannot say, I cannot put my hand uh, on the fire uh, saying that uh, this is uh, uh, still a delta function or not. Uh, but I, I believe that this is the delta, uh, real delta function eventually. But, uh, and of course, uh, let's say, uh, what you can do is uh, also to consider other kind of excitations. Because uh, maybe like in the Kitayev model, uh, when uh, you apply S, uh, you don't only create spinels, but also bisons. So I'm wondering if uh, within uh, this approach uh, you can uh, indeed recover what is known uh, in the pure Kitaev model in which you have the exact solution uh, by uh, Mössner uh, and others. Uh, because the Gutzilla projector can indeed uh, create uh, in some way the visor. But this is something that I would be very interested in studying the Kitaev model within this approach. Because again, this approach is exact for the Kitaev model for the ground state. Uh, uh, of course, if you have a model which is exactly solvable, then you have many different uh, ways of solving it, uh, not only with Majorana electrons, but also within this approach. But you need a triplet pairing, so you need a Pfaffian. So this is the conclusion, and I can stop here. Thank you very much.
in the two liquid phase? Can we stop supplying the field in the energy? No, no. The field goes to zero. Indeed, uh, I, I uh, forgot to mention that uh, indeed uh, here, uh, this is the magnetization, but this goes together with uh, uh, delta EF. So in the from point 48 uh, up to point 0.6, uh, which is quite small, but delta is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And I'm cutting an energy. Mm -hmm. and I'm observing it's part of the delta function. How do you tell it's a magnet or not? Experimentally, how can do it? How can you do it? Uh, still, uh, experiments in order to have a real magnet, you. Okay. But here, I, I know. In the next picture, you, I have, know. you have uh, okay, you have a massive uh, continuum right above it, but. Uh, what? No. Uh, you see, the problem is with, with interpretation. Let's say here delta is equal to zero, so I don't expect having magnets. But let's say the 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 correct uh, uh, answer uh, would be that uh, one should do the side scaling of the uh, of the height of the uh, peak and see if it is uh, constant or not in the thermodynamic limit. Of course, this is a problem because in, in here, I, this is a little bit uh, hidden, but in, in uh, some cases, you, you, you have uh, two delta functions very close, and then you don't know if you really have two, or this is just uh, a way to say that you have one, but uh, then the weight is the sum. It's, uh, it's, the, it's not like when you compare the energy that is uh, well precise. Uh, here, uh, one should uh, really. Yeah, look how the, the delta function will merge, but it's complicated. So this is just a sort of qualitative uh, uh, picture. Let's say the qualitative uh, stuff that is was not obvious uh, is the softening at pi zero. But because you have on the other side the columnar, yeah. while here you, the columnar is a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, but because you have the columnar face, uh, here the columnar is, uh, is separated. So in principle, as if, if the transition would be first order from, a, from an antiferromagnet to a spin liquid, then I wouldn't expect any softening. He said this is probably a signal that indeed the transition is uh, second order to a state uh, which uh, is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, non magnetic. In principle, yes. Yeah, for the non frustrated case, indeed, I should uh, say that uh, we overestimate. So we have uh, this, uh, so we indeed find that uh, the energy of pi zero is uh, slightly below pi half, pi half, which is uh, probably correct. But the weight, the difference in the weight is much uh, smaller than what uh, you find uh, in, uh, uh, in, in your uh, uh, work with uh, uh, Sandwick. You find that uh, here the, the peak is uh, uh, quite. Uh, reduced uh, with respect to that. Instead, in our approach, uh, they are, uh, they, this is slightly smaller, but still it's uh, not as small as uh, what you find. You mentioned somewhere uh, so that you have single magnet background. So can you estimate the percentage of the overlap of the ideal magnet? Spectrum based for ideal magnet for R equal to zero in the notation for some uh, everything is in the data, but I don't. I, I could do it. Uh, yeah. So basically, so I want to ask if you, there is some approximate way to say about the size of a magnet. You know, how if it's yeah. true, uh, yeah. 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 Thick, yeah. But it's you know, kind of yeah. But this has been done. So you you have pictures in the in this uh, in this uh, work they, or in the Dalla Piazza thesis. Uh, they 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 reported exactly this. So they showed what's the extent. Uh, 
of the magnum. So this is a 22 by 22, so it's uh, how many? It's more than uh, 400. But again, so many of them are, are, uh, have a zero norm. So eventually, it's, uh, they, they are, so here you see that you have, the point is that you have many energies here. You have energies there, but the weight is zero. Mystery. At the moment, it's a mystery. It's at the moment, it's a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in, in one in one D, in one D. But let, let, let me say, let me say, I, I told you yesterday, but if you take the 6 by 6, uh, 6 by 6, in which you can do the exact annualization, on the 6 by 6, you have millions of states, uh, but in the S of uh, Q and omega, you have only, for each Q, you have essentially two states. So if you take uh, at pi pi, on the 6 by 6, the energy is 2, because it's a small system, and you have a peak here, and you have a peak there. The exact results. And uh, within our approach, we find exactly two peaks. Many energies in between, but with zero weight. On the six, on the six by six, negligible. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 10 to the minus 3. 10 to the minus 3. But with respect to something which is uh, order 4. OK? Uh, so on the 6 by 6, uh, you have only two. Then we increase the size. Uh, we arrive to 22 by 22, and we still have essentially, let's say, a part of this uh, small cloud here, we have two. They claim that, uh, I believe that this is correct, that you have a much, uh, say, well-defined continuum here. But on the 6 by 6, uh, you have two. So uh, if, you, if you just believe in the ED, uh, and then you want to uh, go uh, alone uh, with your uh, legs, uh, then uh, I would be tempted to say that uh, this is not. Uh, of course, again, let me say, we, we did it, uh, I showed in, in Krakow, but we did it also on two legs, uh, two legs. There, you reproduce the triplum, so the, the magnum, and uh, also the two magnum in the, in the symmetric. Uh, so two magnums uh, are probably kept, uh, but of course, if you want to uh, capture multi magnums, uh, this is more complicated. Yeah. 
No, but even, even in the, even I think uh, that even, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but even in the, in the transverse, uh, you have a much uh, uh, larger continuum. Mm. But I would expect that even in the transverse uh, uh, part, you have a some. some uh, but let's say. There will be meaningful comparison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.